This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I came across this video ages ago, in 2016 to be exact, that has always stuck with me. And it's this video here by Altruist, and it's an issue he discovered about how the master clock device, let's say Logic or Ableton or the Octatrack, whatever it might be that's running the show, would potentially destroy the vibe and the swing of the rest of the machines in the chain when it comes to MIDI tempo. And this heavily showed up while he was recording the tracks individually, then lining them up after they've been recorded. It was like mega bad. And I highly suggest checking out that video in case you're curious. But what I wanted to dig into a bit deeper today would be USB MIDI versus five pin MIDI. So I've never tried this before and I'm really excited to see what we learned. So let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, so um, first of all, I have the ERM multi clock, and that thing is one really expensive and two practically always out of stock. So I went ahead and bought. Uh, oh, someone just landed on my mustache. Some lint. I went ahead and bought one of these things. Um, hopefully, this is better than the that last piece of trash from this video. Uh, so hopefully this will work better. I wanted to use this because I got this for 50 bucks at the local store uh, right here. And um, yeah, it's way more affordable than, you know, 550 or $600 for an ERM multi-clock. And if you're trying to do something simple, I'm hoping that this thing works. This should be more than enough. And um, yeah, okay, cool. Let's, let's see, let's set this up. And it's actually so funny when you look at this because you would you would expect it to maybe be no difference. I mean, I'm also saying you would expect it to be before I've even tested it. So right there, I'm in the wrong. But basically, I'm just testing two different types of ways to get clock to this model cycles, but they both rely on USB. So in my head, I want to say it shouldn't make any difference, but I'm hoping that maybe USB matters or... Um, is a bit more stable than a, how old is MIDI? Since 82? Like a million year old caveman way of talking. That still works, by the way. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, I guess there are a lot of things that could be fixed, but not necessarily wrong. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I want to, I'm going to start with just uh, the USB. And my goal here is to record just a very sharp hi-hat sound, record four bars of that, and see, line line them up, uh, four different, basically four different takes. Here, this is what I'm gonna do. I'll just stop talking and show you what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go link our MIDI, and I'm gonna say output to electron model cycles. Whoa, easy there, partner. Where'd it go? Output to cycles. I'm gonna just set this to zero for now. We're just not even gonna worry about this. And if I press play, cool, that starts running. Okay, easy there, partner. Uh, we're gonna just go to bank, whatever, to this pattern. Sweet, I'll take this. Why is there still stuff here? Anyway, we'll clear. I'm gonna mute everything except this sound. And I just wanna do this. So when I press play, where, ah, oh, why would you do that to me? <laughs> it loaded the sample I actually selected. Cool, that's all I want. Decay super short. Oh, and uh, actually, let's do this so you can hear it better. <clears throat> okay, cool, so that's it. I'm gonna go here, and for whatever reason, that's still playing. We'll set our audio to one and two. Awesome, and I wanna say, cool, record. Arm, arm, arm. Oh, almost missed that. You know what, instead of four bars, I'm just gonna do two bars, cause that'll kinda get the point across. Awesome, so then I wanna do it again. And I'm gonna do this two more times, so F this part, you're, you're, you'll, you get the idea. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? Oh, caught live action. 
Man, this is the stuff that they try to hide from you, government style. Look at that. Look at that. Completely missed. I don't even know what what caused that. Uh, my Mac Mini is the Intel one, not the M1. I am also on Live 10, and I am in Big Sur. And I only have 8 gigs of RAM because I planned on upgrading later because it was way cheaper. But I haven't yet, so maybe that has something to do with it. But honestly, my CPU is at nothing, and this is doing nothing. And I haven't had any issues, so I really don't know what the hell that was about. But let me go ahead and record some more. Cool, dude. Record arm it. <sighs> See, that one missed the first one completely. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And now it won't... Okay, hold up. What is going on? MIDI, sync, clock in, clock out. I can turn clock out off. There's no like weird feedback loop. Like, why is this tripping? It's tracking it, but it's not syncing. Just to be safe, I'm gonna turn track off. That was a weird take. And I guess let's do it one more time. Oh, you know what? That first one I think is just latency by default. Dude, why? It did it again. It did it again. So this test came up with some wild results that were honestly laughable, but really quick before we get into the results of the test, let me give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. In case you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. Whether you're a beginner, a pro, a dabbler, a master, there will be a class for you. A class I recently came across that has kind of gotten my creative juices flowing is Create Inspiring Art for Change by Nicholas Smith. I want to start with a scary question. Are you an artist? Are you a professional artist? Are you a starving artist? I love how Nicholas teaches ways for us to connect with others through our art, but also just as importantly, connecting with ourselves through the process of making art. And one of my favorite things about Skillshare is that most classes are under 60 minutes with short repeatable lessons so I can kind of come and go as I please. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of the premium membership. So you can go ahead and explore your creativity. All right, now let's go check out how these test results came out. Note that the very first, maybe quarter of a bar, this entire section here, <laughs> will be... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. This is completely unusable. Oh man, what a nightmare. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't even know what to do with this. This is with the USB. I was hoping that this would be the stable one. These two here, I did hit record when it was set to monitor auto, not in. Um, maybe that has something to do with it. Let me go ahead and try this again, just to be safe. I want to be as, as thorough as I can, but also not waste my time nor your time. So let's try this one more time with just in, because this is the way I record stuff, is I just leave it to in. Okay, that looks a lot clearer. Wait, hold up. This was set to in, but it, this is the one that skipped? What? is going on oh man maybe the ERM is worth it and I swear I am NOT sponsored by ERM or anything like that I that thing has never given me weird random hiccups like this um, I'm not even gonna mention the ERM you know what let's try this one more time all tracks are muted all we're listening to is just this keep it nice and simple easy peasy get me four clean bars that's all I ask okay Cool. So if I go and look at this, is I want what I'm trying to figure out is 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 the latency, I just said is like 10 times, is the latency consistent enough that I can then just say, you know what, I'm gonna go in here and just adjust this amount of latency. See, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is exactly what I was afraid of. 
it is off enough that that would make a difference because if we really nitpick this stuff and zoom in like crazy, um, it's not even a millisecond. And the only reason I mentioned that this is, is pretty crucial is because when I listen to, let's say, an NPC, whether it's the old ones, the new ones, or um, the Octatrack for that matter, their swing and timing is, oh, Octatrack's a little sketch, um, but basically when they're being clocked by something and you do multiple takes of a drum machine, and then you want to say, say this was the kick drum, and then this is the hi-hat, then this is the snare, and then this is the open hat, and you have a swing of 68% or something like that, and you were to go and grab these and put these all here, all their swing and clock information is just thrown out the window because all that tiny minute changes that was happening in here, like all these super duper small little um, movements like this, that's going to just completely destroy the vibe and the swing. And that's what I was mentioning in Altruist's video. And the reason I'm even trying this with USB stuff is because he was testing this on the 2000 XL, which is only MIDI. And then I think he was doing, what was the other, I can't remember what it was, um, word clock. I can't remember what it was that uh, he was using, but he had this same issue where it was kind of just throwing off the vibe. So Again, what this tells me is USB, when multi-tracking things in, is not safe unless you were to then warp it, I guess, within Ableton Live or some other DAW, and then add swing and post to audio. So, okay, let's go ahead and group these. Um, this is going to be done, done. Now let's open up another track, and I want to try... Um, this. Please work. Do you work? Are you working? MIDI link output to Mio. Cool. All right. Sync. And this is going to be MIDI out. So that's out of this into here, I'm hoping. Let's see. Let's see. MIDI in. Wow. Okay. 100% suggest this thing. This thing works for sure. It totally just worked immediately. Do not buy that other thing. Check this thing out. <laughs> Link down below if you're interested. Man, I still can't believe how much of a letdown that last product I bought was. Actually, I'm not even sure if I mentioned why that first half bar or quarter bar would even be unusable. Mainly that's because it's taking time to catch up to the tempo of um, Ableton Live. And that's also why I like using I'm not going to say it, actually. You know what? So um, you can, in a way, ignore that, and that's why I'm always zooming into the second half. Okay, cool. That worked. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just pretend we are multi-tracking in a song. So we'll go here, mute that. Because this is exactly what I would do. Like if I was using the PO33, I would go and delete everything and just do the kick. Delete everything and just do the hi-hat. Delete everything and just do the, um, the clap. But if that is synced to the tempo of a DAW over USB or some sort of computer or another box, I think it's mainly a computer issue. You will run into some weird hiccupy types of issues. So let me go ahead and just record this again here. I know I'm kind of doing it inconsistently, but I mean, that's kind of a good test, right? Look at that one. That's way the F off. So then if I were to just go here and let's just record there. Yeah, see, that is a trip. That is mega trip. So then let me just let me just do this again. Uh, select track content. We'll go here, arm this, and record this. Now. This has got to be the most boring video on YouTube. I don't want to. I didn't want to use like a cool sound or anything like that because I don't want it to get too distracting. Not as if I can make some dope beat in a second and call it distracting. So this first section, yeah, see that that is what I expect because Ableton's running and then everything else, but then by the end of it, can it can it catch up? So this is ah, uh, look, it's it's decent, but again, it's still going to run into that issue of of um trying to have the tempo and timing of things. So what happens? So this is playing all of them. And yeah, there's some like weird phasey issues, but I think 
honestly, between this one and, wow, this is getting real confusing. Okay, so let's go ahead and color these, uh, this nice, pretty orange. So this is um, the USB. I think this was a bit more unstable because I ran into a ton of these random cutouts and hiccups. This did have a random moment of just recording weirdly so late that it was almost early. And now what's, what's the fix for this? If you do not get this, you don't have an ERM and you're just using USB MIDI, um, there's a couple things you could do. One, you could just record the entire stereo track in one go, playing from your DAW and running everything at once. Just take your time, practice the performance, do that in one shot. Two, the other thing you can do is just run the machine by itself without this syncing uh, cable. So the way I would do this is I would, of course, just unplug this. And then what's our tempo? 119. And our tempo here is 120. We'll just go to 119. So let's go ahead and do this. Check this out. This is this. I'm praying that this works. Otherwise, I'm going to look foolish and I'm never going to be able to show my face again in public. Good thing public is closed right now. Or is it reopened? I don't know where we're at anymore. Let's see. Record in. So all I'm going to do now is I'll mute this and I'll just say record. Nothing is going to happen. And I'm just going to press play on my own. So this is running the master tempo now. This is its own clock information. The only downside here is, I'm going to go ahead and run another four bars. The only downside here is that you will then have to go in and set where the one is for your clips. Not the biggest deal breaker. It's possibly as fast as multi-tracking in everything one by one, or I guess single tracking multiple tracks one by one, because you still have to do that anyway and you just unplug the MIDI cable and just set your start point. It doesn't take that long. So let's see, do this one more time, just for safe measure. And I'm, please work, please work. Okay, so we'll go here. You can stop, cut, 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 cut. I'll go here. I'm gonna unwarp all of these for now. And this is the other thing too. Tempos are so subjective because in Ableton Live, you can have this at 119, but then in Ableton Live it's, 119.07 or something ridiculous. It's just, it's, it gets a pain. It becomes a pain. Uh, the price you pay, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there. Boom, I'll set our start here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna set our start right there. We'll move this down. Warp is off. I'll go ahead and zoom into here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'll take these, I'll set them to in. And I'll just zoom into here and we'll look at this section here. Yo, look at that. That's actually, oh, that's too far in. Um, this is actually looking pretty, pretty dead on. Can I, can I make this any, like not, I hate those dots. Why are those dots there? Can someone explain those dots to me? Cause look, I manually set it. And you can see that they're pretty much on. Maybe this one here is a little off. And the beauty here is I can just go in and nudge it over just a little bit. You see how it moves there? So I can say, okay, maybe about right there looks pretty good. And then if I go like this, hit H, and then maybe zoom out a little bit. Yeah, they're all pretty on. And this is two bars in. Um, but see, look, this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Oh, yeah, see? Oh, ooh, that's not good, dude. That's not good. Do I show that? Oh, it's falling off. Why is it falling off? Are they all consistently that off? What happened? Okay, that one's off too. Where did this fall off? What went wrong? Was it this weird one? Look, what the heck? So what was I looking at at, at, at two bars? So that one was on, but the the one I chose, man, why can't this happen when I'm trying to like win the lottery or something? But all of them are now late. Okay, you can't win. Latency is uh is there forever. Just track to tape or learn to play the banjo. I don't know. This is 
Man, what did we learn today? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I was hoping this would be uh, a bit more insightful. Um, I still recommend this thing. Yes, the Mio, because it gets you on your way. But MIDI latency can definitely be found in all facets. And the other thing too to note is like, I'm zooming in as far as I can. And let's see, what's the milliseconds on this? One millisecond. They say audibly we hear 10, but I definitely think anything from one to 10 we can sense and feel um, when it comes to a groove or a vibe, especially if there's like a lot of swing on stuff and weird things start happening. I would say this one's the most stable, then five pin MIDI, surprisingly, and then the USB. And the USB can also be a matter of things like RAM, maybe my USB hub, which is powered by the way, um, maybe has too many things plugged in, maybe going direct in, maybe my computer randomly decided to do an update on Chrome in the background and just kind of threw some things off. Uh, but I still think the best way to kind of capture everything with good timing is to practice the performance and just track it in live one take. I mean, not one take necessarily, but in one stereo track and just kind of take your time with it. Yeah, man, this sucks. This super sucks. I was hoping we would get something out of this. Anyway, Hope you found this video helpful. Um, appreciate you a lot. Thanks for kicking it. Thanks for hanging out. And you already know the drill. I'm excited to see you in the next one. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Whack. How else can you do this? <laughs>